with your working conditions. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really quick. Again, that was that was meant to be a, a pilot, uh, a pilot um, scheme, but there was a lot of um, turbulence and volatility in the last place I worked, so mm -hmm. that didn't go any further. But okay, um, okay. yeah, I, I think the business case was there for it. It's just, it just contextually, it, it couldn't have worked out. Yes, yes. And listen, can I ask you whether it was for this project on, on attrition or the previous one for predictive, um, I suppose predictive hiring really for effective managers, um, how do you build those models? So when you're, you're basically constructing or designing your research, how do you go about your variables? Okay, so what I'm trying to get into here is Do you actually, do you do your own research like brainstorming or a focus group or do you actually look at any literature out there, whether it is reporting, report based or actually uh, uh, journal articles, etc. Do you do any research before you're actually building your the testing model that you're actually using? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm obviously... HR, yes. but I, I do think because, you know, I think it's the way it's going, you should have some grounding in data science or big data or yes. some statistical um, packages. So I, I'm, I'm doing a, uh, an online certification. Uh, it's a Dell EMC data associate right. uh, court. And that brings you through how to uh, scope, frame, risk analyze um, a data analytics course. Yes. When I, when I was looking at the micro pulse survey, for instance, I, um, I, I had a project framework to work off in that course. Yes. So to kind of, you know, kind of self run it. The, I suppose the, the, the reason why I, I chose those questions were number one, I wanted to keep it as short as possible. If we were, if we were trying to generate a trend of, yes. of feedback. I, I didn't want someone spending five or even two minutes. Yes. Um, you know, the, the, the conversion rate, they wouldn't have clicked on it. So yeah. if we were using this person twice in a month, I wanted it to be a quick, quick, yes. um, snapshot. Um, yeah, those questions I, I read somewhere and I'll try and get the, the, I'll try and get the citation for you, Maria, but I read that, um, there was a correlation. Uh, it might have been a, Um, a people analytics project on KD Nuggets or, yes. or Data Science Central yes. that those uh, particular um, variables were negatively correlated with retention. Yes. Uh, so I, I think what I was trying to do probably in the end up was maybe do a logistic regression model of those variables and how yes. much weight or impact they had on a decision to turn. But again, that would, that would have been yes. down the line a bit more. But um Yeah, and then maybe develop a predictive model based on those, um, based on that test to, yeah. uh, you know, extrapolate but to, you know, a production data set for the entire company of Virtustream, which is where I was. But it, you know, it, it was very early stages. Um, the bigger analytics project, there was actually an outside consulting company brought in on that. Right. Um, yeah, there will be quite a, a, a well-known, uh, psychometric testing, uh, provider. Right. Um, they, they were partnering with, with, um, with that company to, to assist the, that part of it as well. Okay. But, um, so presumably yeah. they actually have a really well tested tool anyway that, are, that you're going to, to use. No, I'm saying it because I know there is, there is some issues in terms of how you design the model. Okay. So there are people saying, oh, they should be looking at the literature because they don't have to reinvent the wheel. On the mm. other hand, There are people saying, no, you actually need to do even your own research in your own organization because there, there are going to be factors that are not featured in the literature. And I was yesterday at a company in Limerick, uh, and funny enough, he, it came up that flexible work arrangements, uh, had a lot to do with uh, attrition in that particular organization. And that came up in, in their own focus groups, you know, mm. so, um, yeah, it's a kind of a double sword. Uh, double edged yeah. sword, you know. So, yeah, no, no, go on. No, like I think it is kind of a, a chicken and an egg situation yes. as well. In that, um, you know, you can you can use a, an association rules algorithm to just you know, like k-means clustering or something, just throw all the data you have yes. and see where where 
where it lies and you, you know you'll see a pattern there but for you to do that you need to have the data yes as well yeah. and i take your point totally i do think that what works in one company i i you know, I would have reservations about yes. just taking that wholesale and deploying it in another. Yes. Each company's different. Their big culture is different. You know, in in I suppose accountancy, accountancy, there would yes. have been a long tradition of long hours. So maybe long hours aren't don't have such an impact that they might have in in a yes. different company. So yeah, I think um, I think the literature can point to can point to more salient, I suppose, relevant um, variables. But I do think you have to probably pick the most ones, yes. the most kind of relevant, relevant ones for the company yeah. and, and build a model out of that. Okay. And listen, do you see yourself or your role in the next maybe five, even ten years, you know, even whatever, in a different firm, do you see yourself at, as the brain behind that analytics design or do you see yourself more like the analyst, you know, dealing with the um, data and getting... getting? Yeah, like... I think, I, I think the days of, of a HR person going through their undergrad, their four year course and not being exposed to any, um, data science, big data tools or analytical or statistical, um, tools. I think those days are, are coming to an end. Okay. Um, like, uh, I do think that, you know, it should be, it should be an actual module within a, within any HR course know that you know you're I, I don't think it, HR should be seen as a non-technical course anymore yes. you know other aspects but I think every, you know I suppose the literature and, and publications have been moving to a HR evidence-based model of yes. HR um, and I, I think you know the majority of HR professionals will will be working within small to medium-sized enterprises where you won't have a dedicated data science or, yes. or business analytics yes. team yes. that will and it, that may not be available for HR. Yes. And I think the value that someone that even has a small bit of knowledge around how to frame and deploy a people analytics mm-hmm. project, you know, it, it can be, it can far outweigh the cost. So I think whether that training happens in college or afterwards, I think it's probably up to every HR yes. professional to become proficient in, yes. in data science. Um, well, I but think I, you, I, again, I would say that maybe Maybe not the analyst, but maybe the, the design, how to frame a business question, yes. how to frame a, a business problem, a statistical question, maybe. Yes. But, um, like I, I, I would never become a data scientist. Yes. You know, like I, I don't have the time to dedicate to the subject, yeah. and, but I would be able to maybe have a conversation with the data scientist and say, well, you know, why did you choose this variable? You know, yes. that's an interesting finding. Can you talk me through this? Yes. Can you tell me how you removed outliers? Do they have a massive effect on, yes. on, on how the model was deployed after that? And I, I, I think if you're able to have a conversation at that level, already you're probably contributing on the data side and bringing what you know about yes. the HR side. Yeah, and you could actually coordinate that work that is, you know, hmm. based on HR information but or, you know, strategic priority, but also you know, coordinating the data scientist that is working for you. So Definitely, both, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. funny because I don't know, I, I have I haven't done a lot of interviews for the moment, but I met a profile like you yesterday. Uh he was actually in talent acquisition as well for a while and he moved to here. Not here. He, well in, in I was with him in Limerick yesterday. But he's 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 actually I think you're the rare case. <laughs> You're you're the special case here, uh, because usually what I'm finding is either HR people trying to tap into data scientists that are in finance operations, etc. Maybe with one or two issues that they really need to solve and they really need to get the evidence. Uh, or you're I'm getting a lot of HR professionals that actually have, haven't got a clue of what they're actually doing. Okay. So yeah. I'm, I'm I'm actually glad that <laughs> that I'm finding <laughs> people that, that are, at least that they know what they're doing, okay? Because what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do with this is um, to do it from different perspectives. So, so, okay, so I'm trying to define the field from your perspective, you know, HR professional in HR analytics, but also vendors, consultants. And data scientists. So with the views of all of them, trying to say, okay, this is how the picture looks. 
And as you say, you know, larger companies have a business.